Court is calling 2023 CR 0543 State of Texas versus Wilbur. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell from the state. Defense? Jason Goss from Michigan. And are you Mr. Yes. Are you going to have to speak up so I can hear? Yes. Okay. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Villamil, I'm showing you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Your Honor, we are proceeding on count three and waiving counts one and two. Any objections? No, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of aggravated sexual assault of a child? That's a first degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from five to 99 years in prison and life and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Villamil, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? No. Counsel, has your client had a chance to uh, confer with an immigration attorney? Uh, I have conferred with an immigration attorney. I have informed him that uh, a plea to this is, uh, he, he's actually a permanent resident. A plea to this would be a certain denial of future permanent residency and deportation um, after serving a prison sentence, which is what he's pleading to. All right. Mr. Did your counsel advise you of the consequences of pleading no contest or guilty in the application of federal immigration law? What was that again? Sorry. I said, did your attorney advise you of the consequences of entering a plea in this cause number, uh, either no contest or yes. guilty, and how that applies to federal immigration law? Yes, sir. Did that advice include possible consequences such as deportation, exclusion from the United States, or the denial of naturalization? Yes, sir. Do you understand the consequences of entering a plea in this case as it relates to? your immigration status. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, sir. According to the plea, you're pleading on count three. Punishment is to be assessed at 15 years in the prison. There are no applications. There's to be no contact with the complainants and there's chapter 62 compliance. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Here's my question, because I see that affirmative finding of family violence has been crossed through. Is this is right? complainant his relative or not? It, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes. Showing you what's entitled waiver appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counselor, have there been any such motions? No. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence to support the defendant's plea? And we offer state's exhibit number one and all attachments. Okay. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? 
Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony? Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence states' exhibits one and attachments. The court has reviewed the same. Uh, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. Is there a reason I should accept this agreement? Why am I accepting this agreement? Well, Your Honor, the, um, in this situation, um, what, what he has pled to is, is a single count of a single time of sexual assault of a child, which is aggravated sexual assault of a child. Uh, he has agreed to do this um, early on in his process. He is not, uh, he is not contesting um, his guilt and he is not contesting what's going on. He's agreed to go to prison in 15 years is a substantial amount of time. State, why should I accept Your this Honor, agreement? Your Honor, the, the child is, is very young. She's in, she's in therapy right now. This was, I, I discussed it with the mother um, and this is, um, there is a, a desire to get closure early on in this case, Your Honor. So, at this point, we haven't had to um, uh, re traumatize the child by bringing her in and talking to her about this case yet. This case is horrible. And I mean, I know he says he's pleading to a one-time uh, penetration, but from reading he this. He didn't say that. I said it because okay. I was just talking about the legal issues yeah. with that. So. But I mean, having a child lick his, well, having her brother lick his butt. Uh, that, that was something that I think was determined that that did not happen. Well, she says that he asked her to lick his butt. That's. I, that's a different one. Yes. What is wrong with you? Well, Your Honor, I'm not trying to like be around the bush. She was showing me her her crotch, and that's. And you got turned on. No, I didn't. I'm telling you, I'm I'm not like physically like. Well, I did get turned on, but not. Well, after a while, she just kept doing that. Tell her not. You know what I mean. I'm so not, you're blaming a six-year-old? I'm not Yarda, blaming my six-year-old. Yarda, Yarda, my client was sexually abused when he was a child. Um, I, How old is he now? He's 35 years old now. It, but there, it, it, the trauma that he suffered as a child has it has definitely um, surfaced in a way that is abhorrent. It's in a way that um, is obviously it's not good. And that's why we are here. And he is willing to go to prison, be a lifetime registered sex offender, almost certainly be deported. He'll never live. He's been in this country since he was two years old. He will never live in this country again um, legally. And he will so have he's being there. released to, after he does his time, released to go somewhere else and deal with his trauma that may result in him molesting some other child? Well, he has. Uh, what, what he is hoping to do is, as you know, the TDCJ system offers a pretty comprehensive sex offender uh, counseling and treatment. And of course, you know, he will at some point be wanting to, to go on parole. He knows that he's going to have to complete that to do that. We have talked about it, explained it. He's gonna take the opportunity to do that as well as other programs that are offered in TDCJ. He is motivated to do that. And, and you know, at some point, at some point when he is released, as I said, he, he's gonna to go to a country that he's never that he has basically never lived in his entire life, um, which- And I what country would that be? Mexico. They have nice beaches there. So again, we go back to the point, what were you thinking? Yeah, I, I can just say sorry, but like the only thing I can tell you is that I didn't do it, didn't like, I try not to hurt her. You know what I mean? Like, 
Wait, are you saying that you were molesting her and as you were molesting her, you were molesting her in such a way because you didn't want her to, to hurt her? No, I asked her, you, you put this in your mouth. That's it. And she said, no, I said, that's fine. Okay, that's it. No, this is not, this is a penetration. Your Honor, if it, it, what he has pled to is, and what he confessed to is, is by penetrating the anus with his finger. Mm -hmm. um, and he had told the police when they asked him that he told the police that he did that. Um, at the time, which is another thing, he he was he was honest with the police. He told them what he did, um, you know. And, and at this point, he we're we're asking for we're asking for this because we we have agreed early on not to leave this on a docket, not to go through the process, not to have his daughter have to come in and, as the prosecutor said, be traumatized by this by this. Have to come in and talk to prosecutors. Have to get the phone call from the DA's office. They want it done. He's they're they're going through a divorce. He's never going to have custody of these children. He's he's lost basically everything, including the country where he grew up, and and he's going to lose his freedom for up to fifteen years, and for a minimum of seven and a half. But as the court knows, parole doesn't happen like that for these cases. They're going 75, 85 percent of their time, and so he's he's lost his freedom for more than a decade. He has done a, a horrible thing. And there's nothing that he can say right now that can explain that. I, I think the court's questions of him, um, how he has, he has confessed to you and now that he has done it. And what no, he pled no contest. He pled no contest because I advised it because there's a civil case going on, but that's a legal ad ad advice that he was getting from his lawyer. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand, but he pled no contest. So again, we're back to what were you thinking? because I'm trying to figure out where you're coming from to figure out whether I should follow this plea or not. Sorry, Yana, I didn't do it. I didn't do it to like hurt my daughter. I tried, I'm begging and telling you, please, I'm telling you, please. I'm not, I'm not trying to force my hand in her vagina or in her ass. I basically grabbed her and I put my finger where it shouldn't be. That's it. Like a, a I can't, I don't know how to explain No, so the way, the way you're explaining it to me, you're making it seem like it was an accident. No, it wasn't an accident. So was it an accident or not? Because you're telling me you just grabbed her and you're making it seem like your finger just accidentally penetrated the anus. The thing is, she, she, I just don't know what she wants. Like, she's spreading her legs at me. Like, what do you want me to do? And like, she's spreading her whole vagina at me like at least four or five times dropping her pants, to, like literally, like, it's not like I'm telling you, like my actions were right. I know, I'm just trying to figure out where you are mentally and yes. So if I grab my daughter's butt and I throw her on the bed and I didn't like, or force me to sleep. Your Honor, at the time he told police officers that he had put his finger inside of her anus. Um, so it wasn't accidental. Am I right in assuming that? He, he did not tell the police officers it was accidental. I don't think that he's trying to communicate that to the court. Um, I, we want that we would, we are asking the court to follow this plea bargain. Um, it is obvious that the man, it is obvious that the man has sexual deviancy. And it's obvious all of those things that we have for people who are charged and who people who are convicted of this, all of those things are, we're doing here. He's going to the penitentiary. He's going to be a registered sex offender for the rest of his life. All of those things are, are, are what's happening in this situation for people who have this apparent or this abhorrent behavior. He's, he's obviously injured this child and he, he understands that. He's signing for 15 years to go to prison because of what he's done. All right. So this is a life case, honestly. So State, you want to explain to me why the court should follow this 15 years? Your Honor, this was done... Um... You know, having been in this position, I have seen these cases that languish for four or five, six years. And we had, I had had a discussion with the mother and the benefit of the child was to get this done, have no right to appeal so the child could move on. Um, it's, it's up to the court's discretion. I'm happy to, to reconfer with defense counsel as well on this. All right. If you all want to reconfer, the court would be willing to accept a plea of 20 years, not 15. If you all want to reconfer on that, you can. Okay. Or, all right. Your Honor, 
two things. I, yes. I, I, I'm set in jury trial in County Court 13. They're starting to pick a jury now. Oh, tell them you're in felony, felony court. I'll call County Court 13. It, well, it's just Skinner. It's County Court 13 impact. I'll call them. So if you all want to confer and see if he's willing to accept 20 years. I, I can't talk to my client about something like this in the matter of, of, of a few minutes. I mean, this is something that we just asked for a reset if that's what the court is is at, is, is asking us to do. It's it's it, it, it puts too much pressure on the attorney-client relationship for me to talk to him in the box about a, a, a complete reworking of this of this plea bargain. Um, I, I spent hours with him in the jail going over discovery, doing all this stuff, and this is... A, I, I'm just I'm asking for a new a, a new setting. All right, Ms. Ferguson, recall this for tomorrow. And if I am in jury trial. Oh, it tell 13, you need to be here tomorrow. And and have her there her jury wait. Yes. <laughs> this is district court. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, counsel, did you complete your trial? How did that go? I did. Okay. Uh, oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> um, oh, yes. Yes, complete on Friday. Okay. Um, on this case, mm -hmm. Judge, um, the last we were here, uh, the court declined to follow the plea, mm -hmm. um, offered the client 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, we are um, respectfully, we have given the court reporter payment for the record, and we are going to respectfully um, file a motion to disqualify the court in this proceeding. Okay. So, uh, so are you, is your client not accepting the 20 years? But, my client is not accepting the 20 years as it's been offered by the court. All right. All right. Ms. Ferguson, can you put this on the jury trial docket? Please? Your Honor, I've been informed that it will take four days for the record, um, including this one. And so, oh, well, whatever date, the first date of jury trial, that's the date of jury trial. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Your Honor, may I put, we, may we put this on the record? Oh, after the the coordinator comes in for yes, jury trial, right? Yes, sir. Fine. Ms. Ferguson, on this case, I need a first jury trial available for this case. All right, court is calling 2023 CR 0543, State of Texas versus Wilbert. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell for the state. Defense? Jason Goss for Mr. All right, we were here on July 6th for a plea. Uh, the court would not accept the plea. The court informed both parties that the court would accept a plea of 20 years. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. We um, we just we wanted to respectfully inform the court that we our intent is to file a motion to disqualify the court um, from this proceeding, and um, that that at this time the court's offer of 20 years to the client uh, the client is rejecting because we are waiting for that motion. We have tendered a check to the court reporter uh, in order to get the record. And then once that record is received, we'll file the motion and okay. go along that process. All right. Well, your um, plea deadline date has expired, so the court will not accept any plea bargain agreements in this case. Your jury trial is set for August 8th. And whenever the court reporter is finished with the re record, the court will be able, reporter will be able to give that to you. I do know that there's a backlog of records that she has from out of Houston and for the fourth court. Yes, sir. All right. Is there anything else? No. All right. Thank you. See you back on August 8th for a jury trial. Ms. Ferguson, can you give them a jury trial reset, please? Yes, sir.